right, we're back. Another weekend on the couch. Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome to Do It For The Story. I'm Morgan. And I'm Stacy, And we are back on the story couch. And this is actually the first episode we've recorded since the release of the, the, first, release episode. Of the first episode. Mm-hmm. So one, thank you. Thank you to everyone who listened, who watched, and especially those of you who reached out personally, sent a DM, a text, an email, whatever. Phone calls. Phone calls with your feedback and just your love. It meant so much. Like, yes. So much. We could have a whole hour about just how much it meant, but I will say this, um, the tears were flowing, the love was felt. Oh my gosh. And we are so grateful for how many people said as well that we were born to do this and we we're storytellers like you don't understand the confidence um and we just are ready to pour it all into this we already have been but hearing from people that not only know us and love us but haven't we haven't talked to in years saying thank you for that we're like we go and we all in yeah we're, we're here and, and I laughed too, because some of the, and, and we loved your feedback too. Yes. We love feedback. We're yes. coachable. We can handle it. Yes. And some of the feedback was, <laughs> which we already knew. I think I even said we, that we in the said intro. We said it about ourselves. We, this is Stacy. this is Stacey talking. <laughs> we sound a lot of fucking alike. I we, we do. <laughs> if it wouldn't make the podcast sound horrible, I would just force Stacy to do one of her really good accents. Hello, so, it's me. <laughs> so you always do it with her. Um, what do you say there? It's just Stacey. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't really distracting. But um, we're going to just try. And we got some feedback on this. And I think a good friend of ours gave us a, when it's natural not to make it sound weird, but just to try and say, Stay sweet. What did you want to say about that? Just to try and kind of like, I'm Morgan talking right now, right? Like teeing Stacey right. up for the next comment. Right. Um, but we're going to, we're going to do our best, but I will also say, um, it's okay if you don't, there are even moments where I thought Same. I was speaking and it was Stacy. Same. So it's okay if you don't realize, like, it's just about taking in the content, but we're going to do the best we can. Yeah. It's funny you say that. I, I legitimately listening to it. And then when I watched it, when we were doing the edits, there was a specific, even in the intro, I think when you said something like, find us on LinkedIn, I legitimately thought I said it. (laughs) I know, I totally know. (laughs) And uh, anyway, so yes, we sound alike and we will do better at stating your name, gangsta, just saying who we are. Saying who we are. And also we realized too, that while originally we were, we are not going to stop creating video and and posting video with the audio um, because we think that there are people that like to watch. Um, But we know a lot of people are on the go like us. You're listening in the car and all those things. Our parents that are like, my kid's down for a nap for 20 minutes. Like I'm listening as I'm cleaning. Right. So we get it. We appreciate you. Yeah. We appreciate you. Should we do a little cheers? I was going to say, can we get our, can we get our crystal glasses? Let's get our crystal glasses. We also sing on the side. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding terribly. <laughs> Clink. Cheers. Cheers Divas. to us. Divas. 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 Ah. Tastes like success. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, Here that was just the highlight of my week. Mm. Just getting Still the feedback that, that it was out. And, um, you know, also big thank you to producer Brad. Thank you so much for... Your patience with us, and your patience, yeah, and your flexibility, and uh, this support. is all a lot of work, and it's a journey, it's a learning mm-hmm. thing, and so we're like grateful to have your support. Yep. Uh, so today, should we? Yeah. Why don't start you tee, why don't you tee up the, topic? the the story that we want to talk about this week? Cool. So today we were thinking about again in the spirit of at least I I say this often, you know we're so lucky to have sisters have each other. To like you heard it in, now you've heard it in multiple episodes, but like in episode one, obviously growing up, we had each other, but we also have each other as a built in sounding board, if you will, advisory board about not just all the life stuff, it's the career stuff, Yeah. which for us too, our parents didn't work in corporate America. So it's not like we're going to mom and dad to talk about, you know 
some of those conversations that don't apply yeah. to what they did. Um, and what I've realized, one it's not just women and it's not just a sister thing. It's everybody can benefit from having close relationships with other people that are in similar fields. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can talk about, you know, you can get advice, but one of those big things for me, which some of my girlfriends who, especially working in different fields, Again, I, I've been lucky that I do have some really great girlfriends I've made from all the jobs I've had. And again, like I've mentioned earlier, it's I've I've worked in a lot of like younger, I'm using air quotes, companies where tech when startups she, and things, you get yeah. closer relationships. Um, so we, I've been lucky to have vulnerable, honest conversations with them and get their opinions. But if you work in, especially in a different environment where generations are varied you don't always have those close relationships with coworkers that you feel like, okay, I can go talk to this, this woman, she's my girl or this guy, he's my boy kind of thing. Um, and so some of my girlfriends that are in those situations that I haven't met through work have come to me. And I realize a lot of the advice I'm giving, especially around interviewing, um, getting a promotion, compensation, how to get a raise, how to advocate more. A lot of it is information that I have. I'm relaying what Morgan has shared because Morgan has been a, a recruiter her entire career. So what? Yeah, I can give you the quick 20 background. years. Yeah. So <laughs> working on 20 years, I think this is my 18th year. Um, and so real quick, two second, I was recruited to be a recruiter when I got out of college. I had no idea what a recruiter was. Um, and I was one of those people that graduated like many. And I can say this because I've interviewed, I wonder what the number is. It's thousands, I'm sure at this point, but I've interviewed, you know, just thousands of people and the percentage of people that actually are in a field connected to their degree is very small. Mm. And it's interesting that I'm actually, my job is now connected to my degree. Same over here. Yeah, which communication, baby. It's very interesting. Um, but I took that, ra that broad, well-rounded degree. I went into that because I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I figured it would kind of just give me the opportunity to, to make a choice. But funny enough, I was recruited by a small startup staffing agency, which means um, a company that is hired by um, another organization. So we'll say staffing firm, staffing firm XYZ um, hires um, a large nonprofit to help them fill a staff accountant role. That is what these staffing firms do. They are they are experts in finding people in certain fields. Um, and so that's where my career began. And being at that small firm, we all wore many hats. And I got to understand not only sales, because at the end of the day, staffing is sales, right? Like you mm -hmm. eat what you kill type mm -hmm. of thing. And so you do have to actually make a placement. <laughs> eat what you kill. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, you actually do have to make a placement to be paid. And so there is that sales side of it. But the thing about this, that sell that I loved and I gravitated towards was I was helping people. Right. I was not selling fax machines. I was selling knowledge and getting people jobs in an area that they wanted a job. Sometimes it wasn't necessarily their dream job, but I was able to say, this is a path for you to get yeah. to where you want to go. So people would come to me. Literally, so they can eat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they can eat. People would come to me and say, this is the degree that I have, or this is just the background that I have, if they didn't even have a degree. And this is where, I, and I would ask them, you know, what's your long-term goals? Like I, my interviewing opportunity at those staffing firms was different than now that I am internal where I would get to say, what's your dream? You know, what are right. you wanting? What right. are your aspirations? Where are you now? And I would get to be like a mini career coach. Right. Um, and so that then led to many years in staffing, getting exposed to 
many, many, many different industries. So I would everything from a nonprofit to a startup, to an architecture firm, to a media company. I mean, the list goes on. And, you know, being in that I was in DC, you know, we had everything, anything and everything you could think of. And that exposure is, I mean, just game changing is the thing that immediately comes to my mind. But I, it was the base of my career and my knowledge. And I'm right. so grateful I went that route versus just immediately going into, into an internal recruiter. Internal recruiter. Yeah, yeah, that would be so different. Like you're saying, if you had to then be convincing someone, you know, you should come sell fax machines. Right. And, and I should say in that story of Morgan being a recruiter, one, you graduated from college in what, 2006? Yeah. And I graduated from college in 2009. Uh, it was a real fun time to get a job. It was hard. You know, I mean, we're millennials. If you're a millennial listening to this, you know the struggle. Uh, but for me, again, where I benefit, and I, I will say this, Lynn's our oldest sister. <laughs> you know I'm not shy about it. I would never want to be number one. <laughs> I would never want to go first in the sibling <laughs> age order. I'm very happy being number four. Uh, I... It took me, again, I had the degree in communications, which of course people at the time, well, communications, communications. Well, <laughs> look at us now. <laughs> Let me tell you, I am using my degree. I have yeah. always used my degree. And um, yeah, we need more people in communications. Let's just, that's another episode. Uh, but I, it was so hard to find a job. And I didn't, when I graduated and I wasn't trying to find the dream, I was just trying to eat. Uh -huh. I mean, I was lifeguarding at the time, just trying, right, you lifeguarding were... and writing a little blog to try to be relevant in, you know, keeping my resume up to date. So long story short, Morgan working for the recruiting agency at the time, obviously I always leaned into, hell oh, yeah, please help me find a job. Yep. I have for many, many other jobs you've placed me, but Morgan, um, got me in with her recruiting agency and placed me, that recruiting agency placed me in my first post-college job, which launched my career. Yep. I'm in tech now. I am a non-technical person in tech. I'm a communications person in tech mm -hmm. and it's not something I ever would have thought I would be in, mm -hmm. but had I not had Morgan, but in the same sense, again, I don't like to your point, I don't think everybody always knows about recruiting agencies. Um, so Gen Z too, listen up. Uh, it is a great way to help figure out what might work for you. It's not just about getting that job. Morgan has helped me tremendously with advice on what to do when I'm in the current job and coming up against some challenge and obstacles that not just women, everybody, mostly, not necessarily everybody has faced, but most people would have to deal with. Like one that's on my mind lately because a friend actually reached out um, asking me for advice was the old, I'm in a role I am working towards the next step in this role, so getting a promotion. I have been told by my boss or my manager that I need to do X, Y, and Z in order to be on that track for promotion. I've done those things, if not more. I've taken that on. And then that time comes where at least in corporate, it, it, it tends to be season, like there's certain times of a year, right? When you can be considered for promotion. Every company is different. But let's say, you know, that one year mark comes up and okay, they're going over reviews. Am I going to get promoted? And you get the feedback that, you know what, Stacy, we passed on you because yada, yada, yada. Yeah, whatever the reason yeah. is. And, you know, fill in the blank. We don't have the money this year or so-and-so was more aligned or, or we're only allowed to do so many promotions and we're we, only allowed yeah. to do so many promotions, whatever, you know, the, the excuses and I say excuses yep. <laughs> run the gamut. And so this friend recently said, you know, here I've been busting my ass. I've been working so hard and I thought this was in the bag. My boss had been making it seem like and you only because I'm going to chime in because you told me about this because it's a mutual friend of ours. And they actually said 
the boss and the boss's boss had said like, oh, you're shooing for this. Right. So it was like, this right. was not, I'm hoping this was, I'm getting. Yeah. This wasn't just, okay, I'm going to go do these things. And then when the year comes up, I'll give the presentation that I did these things. It was, I've been showing them I'm doing these things. I've been giving the promotions proactively or giving the presentations proactively saying, yep, did the thing, did and the thing. And taking on the things that they said you had to take on yes. to and, get a and, promotion. And more, yeah. and more. And so they've taken on those more things and their job title didn't change, right? Because they're thinking, well, that's okay because I'm going to get the promotion. Anyway, when the promotion time comes and they get the feedback, you didn't get it. You are like, and I'm speaking now, I so empathize with this friend. We all have felt it. We've all yeah. felt it. And you are, you're like, what do I do? Because we've been in the situations where you're like, great, company doesn't now value me. I've got to go look somewhere else. Because again, for anyone that's not a millennial Gen X <laughs> or a Gen Z watching us, it's in the workforce, it's a little bit older. The ball game isn't what it used to be. Most careers, unless you're maybe like a teacher or you're working for the government and then you have like a pay grade, you're definitely going to get this thing. You've got to leave your job to make more money. You do have to leave. And I think I've averaged, what, three years at most jobs. I think that's the longest I've been at a job is three years, which I realize makes some boomers panic. But anyway, the... So you get to that point, I didn't get the promotion. Now what now what are my options? And when the friend recently asked me about this, I I was like I kind of didn't really have advice to give. I was like, "What the fuck?" cuz I usually do go for the all right, I got to evaluate and see what else is out there. Let's go back to the job boards, back to my network or see what other positions are at the company, blah, blah, blah. But so I asked Morgan, hey, this is the situation. And again, it was a mutual friend, so she was aware of it too. We were talking about it. And so I would love for you to give the feedback to everybody listening that you gave. Because again, I feel like I ask you a ton about jobs and you're also very transparent, always kind of teaching us. I, I hadn't heard this one and I was like, that's a good one. Yeah. So a couple things before I dive in, um, just so folks that are like frantically taking notes, because I realize that this is something that everyone needs help with everyone. And I'll say, so there's a few things that Stacy said, like leaning on others in, you know, similar jobs, similar types of jobs, um, types of companies, a hundred percent true. Yes. And, um, I have also helped folks in every, not maybe every field that exists, but a wide gamut. And I can say that for not only because of friends of mine, I can say that because of volunteerism. There is an overlap of this, whether you are a chef in a kitchen, whether you are, you know, I'm thinking of my time when I volunteered in Hawaii for folks that are homeless, like getting back on their feet. Like there are so Everybody deals with this in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing I'll say. And when I say this, I don't just mean promotion, which yes, yes, promotion, but I mean compensation, right? We're all, we're all working unless you're yeah. that privileged person that doesn't have to. Good for you. Um, to the rest of the 99% of us. Um, so this, this scenario, um, when it came up, you know, I, I'm always, there's a piece where I tell everybody like, look, there's not a playbook. You know, it's almost like having kids. There is not, every child is different. Every job is different. Every company is different. Um, and the, this is my personal Morgan Williams, my personal opinion through my almost 20 years of experience. Yeah as a recruiter, as someone who has sat next to, and I say next to because a recruiter sits in HR or next to HR, but I, you know, don't have to know the laws of HR. That's not, I, I'm able to though lean on and rely on the, that information to help me. Um, and so 
I just want to caveat this with when I emphasize that these these are my opinions, that this isn't coming from, you know, the training at my current job. This isn't coming from, you know, training from a previous position. This is from thousands of interviews, thousands of conversations with hiring managers, right. thousands, you know, that I am creating for for me and for those around me a playbook of this is what I would suggest to do. Um, but you need to, you know, make the decision for yourself at the end of the day. Um, and also my personality, you know, I am someone who is direct. Um, you know, I, and that I've grown into Stacy and I've talked about this before. I've also <laughs> grown into that even more so really because of my career. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so, I lean on that as well. Not every recruiter is going to act the same way that I do, but I personally think when it comes to money, I don't fuck around. Yeah. And And you need to lean in and be direct. And that's how I personally feel. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that every recruiter out there is going to have the same opinion as me? No. So that's just a quick caveat. Totally. Okay. So now to get into this specific promotion situation, Um, you know, so when we started talking about this, when, you know, this friend of ours is like, you know, I, I was told I need to do X, Y, Z work, take on these, you know, additional duties to then receive the promotion that I know that I deserve, but to receive that, you know, then I will get that. And they've told me you right. know, pretty directly that that's coming. And, and just to say that too, it was, the promotion was just acknowledgement And compensation for the job this person was already doing. Yes. Which happens all the time, which for those that, you know, there could be plenty of people on this call because you're in a different field. Um, There are, there are, whether it's, I don't, you know, I don't even know if that happens in government because there's some, some places that it's real strict. If you're doing the work, this is exactly what you're getting paid. Um, You know, I could think of, um, you know, like a, a law firm, you know, especially a big corporate law firm. If you have a certain title, this is then everyone with that title has the same compensation. Right. Okay. So again, we're talking about, you know, you know, if this relates to you, I guess. Right. If you have the ability, exactly. Yeah. You know, if this, you know, if this relates. So when I heard about this scenario of, you know, up for the promotion got denied first and foremost, you know, I'm listening because I understand why they should, why they're pissed, it sucks. why they should be pissed, why, you know, because let's be real here. Our jobs are jobs. It's called a job for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's work for a reason. Mm-hmm. This is to pay our bills. This isn't fucking rainbows and sunshine. I'm not working because I, I love it. I'm working because I have to. Right. Exactly. And again, unless you're privileged that you're like, oh, I can take that random job that only makes, you know, $50,000 because I have some money that I'm sitting on. The rest of us are all grinding to figure out how we can take care of ourselves and our kids and our families, et cetera, et cetera. So what I said to this individual was I was like, first and foremost, what I always tell people is if you are not making money, you better love your job. Mm. And if you hate your job, you better be making good money. Yes. And that is, again, that's my opinion. That's how I feel because otherwise you will have burnout. You will be pissed. You will wake up every day upset. I've been in those situations where I'm like, I love this job. I don't care that I took a massive pay cut because God damn, when I come, when I put my head on the pillow at night, I'm loving my yeah, last day. That hours. or something was happening in your life that you're like, I had to take this pay cut yes. because this is what I need to do for my family to be whatever. I've done that too. A hundred percent. And and like you said, it's the you better love your job, but it's also like I think that's where speaking for the millennials, mm-hmm. because it, at least for me, it was so hard just to get a job mm-hmm. that it's like anything in life, like first love, that first is always so ingrained in your brain. You know, I can tell you what my, every bill I had when I had my first job Mm -hmm. and what my salary was and all of that. It felt like it took so long just to get there that then I think, and not even as women, but I think even as millennials, we were so used to like, I've got to just hang on to this because, you know, we're still in it now. It's so volatile. The market, you're like, oh, this, I didn't get the promotion, but 
I'm here. I'm, I'm nothing I, I have can a do. Job. Look, okay. And let, let's talk seriously that every human, right? No matter how you identify is in that, has that feeling of like, well, I got to pay my bills and I don't know, maybe if I leave and go to another job, like that boss is going to be a complete jerk. Right. Or the grass isn't always grass greener. Isn't always greener. Right. So there's that, I appreciate you taking that hesitancy to think through that. So Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I appreciate, you know, taking that hesitancy to think through that. And, but also let's highlight too, for, you know, women, we know that we don't even make as much. So there's that, you know, (laughs) women, our grandparents, you know, our grandmothers weren't even allowed to have certain jobs. And I don't mean based on race. I mean, just because you have a vagina, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about, that's already ingrained in us. I should just be lucky. But then when you take a breath and you have someone like, like me, a trusted, you know, whether it's a recruiter or a career coach that says, understand though, I will tell you this isn't 2008. This isn't, you know, the depths of the bottom of the market. You deserve more and you deserve better. And if you are going to stay, which is what this person's situation was, because I was like, look, for you, I don't think you should be leaving. I think because of where you are in your career, you're going to end up going to a new job, mm. a new company. You're going to end up having to sacrifice time because you know you're going to have to prove yourself. Yes. It's the two year to tenure is what I call it yep. in the nine tenured world of corporate. Yep. That you are going to end up putting in time and effort, stress. This person has kids. So you're going to do all these things yes. that are then going to, is it worth it at the right. end of the day? I said the same thing. Like, I mean, I... So I'm glad I'm like, Ooh, look at me. And I was a recruiter for two years, three yeah, years. No, exactly. no, but I mean, I said the same where it's like, no, cause it's like not fair. You've put the work in, you've gotten there. Right. But so, so what was the, cause now I'm like yeah. antsy for the. Yeah. So I was like, I think let's, let's go ahead and fight. Right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and fight for what you deserve. Because I also will caveat this with two. We haven't really given too much about this person's like what their situations were. Obviously, if they're 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 even up for a promotion, they're clearly doing doing well. But this person is leaned on heavily, and their boss is absolutely needs them. They're answering, they're guiding. They are leading individuals that are more senior than them and on the regular. And there is in that, I'm telling her, I'm like, you're telling me all this information. You have job security in that. Yes. So you, you just simply leaning into and advocating for yourself and what you deserve. Don't have fear that you're going to get fired for speaking up. Because this right. person already knows that if they lose you, they they may be in a situation where they're on the chopping block because they're not producing right. the same way. And like you're saying, there this is a person that has extensive, extensive career experience. They are what you in recruiting call a dream candidate. A candidate. And yep. um, they also aren't working at a startup of 10 people. This is a corporate environment. It's a corporate environment that has money, okay? Has money moolah and so and so that's the thing that you have to assess too you know you look i i am then you know looking at this person and i'm saying look you're at a company that has money there's always money i know that there i know if they're hiring for a position right now and the person that they want makes fifteen thousand dollars you know more than what they say that they actually want to make i know that that company can figure it out whether it's they have to give them a huge sign on bonus or whatever the case may be, there's money there. And so I said, first and foremost, you need to get your boss on the phone. Mm. And actually this is a remote person. And so I'm like, you know, let's lean into, you know, this needs to be a video call because let's be real people that you're going to be more uncomfortable and you're seeing the piss on my face. Yeah. Right. You better be off camera for that conversation. Yeah. If on camera, on camera, yeah. yeah, on camera. And, um, and so, I said, you need to first and foremost, tell your boss that you need to advocate for me. Yes. You know that I have sacrificed. You know that I have given you everything that you have asked me to, and you told me this promotion was coming. So now I need to know from you, what are you going to do about it? Exactly. Because you, in this conversation, we should also caveat this with this boss blamed, oh, just HR, the company, the time, they're only allowed to do so many promotions. 
blame, blame, blame all you want. But if you aren't backing that up with how you advocated for me, you haven't done enough and I don't care what yeah, the reasons are. You're not are. pissed. If you're not right. as pissed as I am, yeah. you're not a boss that I actually trust and can lean on. So I'm going to go all the way the fuck in. Right. Because a good boss, in my opinion, and when I've had these some of these conversations before, a good boss, like you're saying, should be pissed. But also a good boss, knowing that they did do the advocating, then should get real with you and almost be like how Morgan is as a recruiter and say, I do not want to lose you, but I understand. Mm-hmm. While money may not always be the motivator, money is necessary. Yep. And you, I'll do, I, I don't want you to leave, but I'll, I understand and I'll endorse you. Exactly. And I'll do everything I can to keep you. But at the end of the day, if I can't get you what we know, we, meaning boss and you, um, know that you deserve, then I will do whatever I can to help you find the right opportunity. Um, and so I said, first and foremost, you know, let's go ahead through and make a list. Um, you know, let's make sure that when you sit down with Larry, boss, um, that you're able to tell, that you're able to ask Larry, okay, well, what's the comp band then for my range? Say that again. What's the comp band then for my range? And, and again, there's going to be many things that we're going to go over today, but one of those things when I talk about comp bands, so in the last gosh, when did that start? It was probably like 2018-ish. So in the last five-ish years in corporate America, there have been certain states that have elected to make it law. And I'll say that again, to make it law Mm -hmm. that for, I'm fairly certain that the number is four people or more at the company. So we're talking small organizations. So we're basically, this is, you know, a blanket statement for these states, for any, you know, employer. If and actually, we can go ahead down and actually, Stace, if you want to scroll down, because I actually did make a, a note for us, um, the actual states, oh, but perfect. like California, New York, um, Hawaii, Nevada, Maryland. I'm doing this off of memory. Connecticut. I think, I'll Connecticut. Help you out here. Yeah. So Rhode Island, Washington. It's Hawaii, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Maryland, Nevada, New York, Rhode Island, and Washington have active pay transparency laws. And so are all of those laws the same? No, but what I'll give you is, so for example, California, which, oh, God bless, we love California. Man, they, they, they are, if you are ever curious of how to advocate across many different things, not just within, within corporate America, but look at what California is doing and then use that as like, okay, that can be my baseline of what I'm going for within my state, how you vote or, you know, what you're advocating for at your company, because your company doesn't have to go off of what a law is. Your company can make a decision. There you go. What I'll, and I'll explain this. So because of one of the companies that I previously worked at, we were super large organization. And when we knew that these laws were coming into play because this company was, you know, it is throughout like, you know, oh my gosh, every major metropolitan area, you know, random, I mean, almost every state. And then they're global. They were like, you know what, what we're doing for one, we obviously are going to do for the rest. Mm -hmm. And so that organization and now others. So even, so let's say for example, right now it is law. If you, Stacy lived, decided you're living in Pennsylvania, but you work for a company in California, it's required for them to also give you that information. So if you're remote and you work for a company headquartered in California, in California, okay, you are also required to get that same information. So that's also where you need to lean in. Like, because there will be, and sometimes too, like Delaware is one of those random states where like, it's great to have your organization be associated with yes, Delaware for, for like for tax and all these other things. So make sure that you even know wh- wh- how your company is associated, um, you know, more than just like you're getting paid this Friday. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's huge. Yeah, but, so mm-hmm. pay transparency is not only the comp, when I say comp band, I mean the bottom of what your job is leveled at. So every job then for these, which is also requiring corporate America to clean up, clean up their compensation. Yes, because then you are saying, okay, this person's job actually needs to be associated with a comp band. It actually needs to be associated with a specific level. 
And so then you know, okay, so I'm just going to do a hypothetical to make it easy. 100, let's say for this random, I'm going to make up a job so that no one's thinking that this is associated with anything. Um, a uh, Stacy's tech startup. Stacy's tech startup. And at that tech startup, I'm just actually going to talk about something, a job that doesn't exist as a tech startup. The panda, the panda handler, panda handler. (laughs) So the panda handler has the bottom of the panda handler range is $100,000 and the top of the panda handler compensation band is 150. So ideally you're going to always want to be within the midpoint at, of that range, unless you know you're a junior panda handler and within your level, you really are so new into the skills of that level of the job that like, I get that I'm only making 110. Right, right. But when you are like this person, this friend of ours that we're talking about, that you're an expert panda handler. (laughs) You're chief panda handler. You (laughs) basically should be chief panda handler. You're at the top. So then you're like, Well, if I'm not going to, I told this person, so you're not going to get the promotion, then find out where the comp band is and get to the fucking top. And your boss needs to find that information out for you and, and make sure that they are advocating for you how to get to the top of the band. And I said, while they're doing that, you need to, in same conversation, let them know I'm doing less. I You told yeah. me I needed to do X, Y, Z to get the promotion. I'm now, you need to take this off my plate. So let's, let's, let's take a pause. Cause I do a pause and I want to play it back just so everyone, because sometimes Morgan does get go into say, recruiter I get term. But no, yeah. no, not oh, even and, that. And I'm team, just saying terms. Yeah. For, and for people that are listening to this, that also maybe like I mentioned a uh, teacher, it may be different. And I'm saying, I don't know, but some I'm just going off of my girlfriends yeah. sometimes that are teachers. And when we're in group chats with some of us that are in corporate, they're like, what the fuck are you guys talking right. about? Your compensation band being that, like Morgan was saying, you know, what's the minimum to the maximum of what you can get. So again, always hit that, try to go for that average. Now that's what I was going to ask next, which you started to segue into. I heard I didn't get the promotion. I go and I go to HR to get the comp. Like who, who, where am I going to get the comp ban information? Yep. Yep. Okay. So it depends upon, again, so this is not all state is connected to this, but I'll tell you this, even if you are in a state that is not required by law to give you the comp ban, I would personally still lean into I would say, look, I get that we're not a state that has signed up for comp bans, but I need you, Larry, to advocate for me. I need you, Larry, to find out because there is a comp ban. There is a comp that's associated with your job, most likely, and I need you to find out how much you can get me if you want me to stay. Yeah. Okay, so that's aside from that. So then for the people, this person was in a state or is in a state that's associated with a comp ban. So then I'm saying first and foremost, Larry, I'm putting it on Larry because Larry's my boss and Larry should be doing this for me. Larry should be my advocate. And think about it this way. The hiring manager is involved in the salary negotiations. So why, and and again, I'm gonna caveat this with, that's not law, but that's my experience at every company. Right. I'm not saying that's every hiring manager, but from my understanding it right. is. So make that Larry's job to go to HR and get that information. Yes. That right there. And I literally, I'm, I'm loving that we're on the same page because I, I was just jotting, if you're watching, I was jotting a note down that me having been a manager before and stepping into the role as a new manager, I wanted to make sure one, my team was happy for those that I saw were maybe doing more than others. And one of the first things I did in the first week of the role was I went to HR and said, I'm going to need to know what everybody's making because of that reason. I had seen it happen so many times before and I wanted to make sure one, I was making things right. And two, one of the most expensive or one of the biggest expenses, biggest expenses for a company is having to hire on new employees, right? It's the training, getting them up to speed, the recruit- working with the process. recruiting agency, mm-hmm. paying out that bill, all of it. You're taking a gamble. So being able to retain employees, Huge. If you're a good manager. You should better be in that boxing ring, fucking knocking the lights out. And you out. know what? Exactly. Knocking the lights out. You know what I will say? Cause you're making me think of this and I don't want to forget it. 
I will brag about myself here, but I'm going to do it for value for people understanding like where I'm coming from. When I was a manager and I've been manager a manager at two different locations, was it two or three? Anyway, at minimum two, um, you know, I've had like about 15 ish people that over the course of my career that have reported to me, I have never had anyone quit underneath of me. And I'm saying that because I take it fucking seriously. And I, I'm one of those people that yeah. I curse at work because I think emphasis at, on certain things is valuable. Yeah. And, and also what, we're all adults. It's a fucking word. Well, but still, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it though. I would say it as I would in a meeting. I'm saying it right here. As a manager, I have elected to take a job where I am essentially, I always mm. looked at it as like, I'm like your fucking parent. Yeah. I want what's best. I, I, I do not only want you to have what I had. I want you to have more than I had. Exactly. I want it's you. That. I so, don't want you to experience this. I don't yep. want you to have to leave the company. I want you to know I fought. I want to make it easier for yes. you. Yes. I, it's no different than how I am as a parent. I am working hard to make Angel's life better. I don't want him to have to deal with some of the things that I dealt with. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make him privileged that he's unaware of how hard it was for me to get there, but I want him to go even further than I did. And I think of that same thing for my subordinates, right? And I I hate, and the last thing I'll say is I cannot stand, and I've heard it so many times in corporate America. Well, I didn't have that. I was just going to say, if you are in a manager role, just because that was a natural next step for you to get the promotion, for you to get an increase in your pay band, and you are not someone that can actually use your voice and lead, get the fuck out of the role. You're not doing anybody into service. And I can guarantee you, everybody on your team is talking shit about you behind your back. Absolutely. Every person on that team is talking shit about you behind your back. Absolutely. And we've all dealt with a horrible manager. I, I, I mean, I have, I mean, yeah, we've I, all, I, we've I, all been there. I'm actually getting triggered by the thought <laughs> of some horrific managers that I've had. Um, and you know, when you have, no one's forced to become a manager, you actually have to be hired into that job or be promoted into that job and accept the promotion. So if you can't advocate for others, fuck you. Yep. And I'll say it again. Fuck you. Yep. Yep. Fuck you. And that's why too. And it's interesting, even when I've had, again, and I'm going to just say boomers, not because you know, again, if you're a generation that's going to hate on other generations, it's just, you're just aging yourself. I'm saying boomers because it was a different experience for them, but in, in a lot of their roles, I mean, um, where you get to stay where you are because you had a pension, because you had a companies. It's so hard to find those benefits. It's hard enough to find a company that has a 401k match, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't owe that company anything other than the job you're doing. And I say that on and in terms of the loyalty part. And so it's so, again, if, if you have a great person and talking about this friend who is a rock star candidate, as they say mm. in startups, God, I hate that word. Yeah. It's, I would be doing everything to keep them. So I don't have to then worry about training on somebody who sucks or somebody who's not killing it or somebody who won't naturally lead the team mm-hmm. and bring others up. And I think, so not to digress too much, but I want to go back to the, yeah, let's go back so to the option yeah. number one we've covered. You said, you know, find out what the pay ban is. Tell that manager, that boss, fight for me. I should be at the top of my pay ban. If you said, oh, we couldn't give you the promotion this time. The second thing was you were saying do less. Because I've been in that experience before where they're like, we can't do anything. This was years ago, obviously before I had the pay ban information. And I did say to that manager, well, I'm not going to come in every day to the office. This was like in 2013 or something. I don't even care if you look at my LinkedIn. And so it was before everybody was working remote. I was like, I want more vacation days, find them. I'm not coming into the office as much. So know that I may tell you the day of, or I'll have a set day where I'm not going to come in on Fridays. You have to flex on that because then magically Stacy was allowed to not come in the office when she didn't need to come into the office Yep. when no one else could. Yep. So there is power that a manager has 
that doesn't have to, not saying it, they doesn't have to involve HR, but there's other flex Absolutely. areas to go to. Absolutely. Your but manager, you should fight for the money first. You should fight for the money, but your manager should also always be your air cover. That's why they're the manager. So if it is down to while they're figuring out how to get you more money, because let's be real, they're not going to be able to sign the check in 24 hours from when this conversation's happened. Yes. You know, this is corporate America. Uh, you know, all of the <laughs> insanely annoying things that it takes to get sometimes the most menial task done. Let's not act like they're handing out fucking cash. But in the interim, what your boss can do is, oh, I don't know, the, let's say something that you don't appreciate doing or you just shouldn't be doing. Like maybe you're doing all the interviews. Maybe you're on every interview mm. panel that, you know, your boss that your you know, boss should really be making that decision. These people aren't reporting to you. Maybe that needs to be taken off your plate. Maybe you're like, but I love being involved in that. I want to make the decisions on the team. Then great, keep that. But I'm making examples here. Yeah. Maybe it is, again, to Stacey's point, where you're hybrid. Maybe you go into work, you know, multiple days a week. Or um, or you've been voluntold to be the culture vulture. Yes, cult, culture. Or maybe you're <laughs> like, oh, you're taking on like D&I initiatives and all these things. If yeah. it's not in your job scope and they have told you, especially for this person in particular that was told like, do more to get the promotion, then, you know, we'll just promote you into it. Well, now I don't have the promotion. So my motto is in all caps, do less. Yes. So then- manager then what are you taking off my plate okay is, are there is there a meeting that i'm running this person was running massive meetings i'm telling you stuff that like people above her should absolutely have been running that's so the these, boss <laughs> yeah it's the like, boss couldn't run the boss couldn't run so it's like okay so take these then you need to take these things off my plate and the thing is too if you then need to lean into hr and your boss is that asshole that's like I'm not taking that off your plate. Then you're like, well, I'm going to have to go to HR because I don't, now I'm doing a job I'm not paid for. Well, that's that's a perfect, that again, same page here because I was thinking the same thing is if I go to my boss and I ask for the pay grade or the um, comp ban, when do I, when, and, and I, it's sad that I'm even asking this because like we mentioned in some other ep earlier episode about the workplace sexual harassment and things about not utilizing HR. Totally. When to go to HR because also corporate, there are a lot of resources there, I think. And that's where I'm always like, you know, when do you go to HR before you're like, does the boss handle it? Do I give him a yeah. date or her um, a date? Yeah. So I think the first thing that you do, and this is again, because you know, we're dealing with people here, right? We're not, we're not dealing with fax machines, you know? Um, so there's not going to be any specific thing that I can tell you is going to happen because your boss is a different person. So, right. um, but first you're saying, Hey, I'm having this conversation. You didn't give me the promotion. Um, you know, let me know next week, you know, what you found out because if you give them two weeks, two weeks turns into a month. You want to under promise, over perform in co corporate America. So you are giving them the timeline of, let me know what you find out next week. Let's yes. have it when, you know, I like that. if you don't already have a weekly meeting, if your boss is that asshole that can't find time to connect with you for at least 30 minutes a week, Ooh. then you need to say, okay, I need to, when can you connect with me next week for 30 minutes um, to get mm. the update? And so then when next week comes, there is no update then, and you're saying, oh, what, you know, how was the conversation? you get particulars you ask you know I just I know that sometimes let's be real people are scared of HR or you might have a real asshole people in culture you know whether it's people in culture business partner or HR business partner you might have an asshole in that position yep so you can even make your boss feel better you know I know Tiff can really be an asshole sometimes but you know how did that conversation go like what did she tell you the time frame is he may say she didn't make time for me so then you can say okay how long do you think we should you know we should give Tiff to get back to us um, before we go to Tiff's boss. Because yes. this is, again, this is a job. This is corporate America. These people are in these positions for a reason and HR exists for a reason. And there are laws binding HR to certain things. And so you can push as far as yeah. you are personally comfortable. And I will say too, because again, I say it, I've been in this situation, like we said, so many of us have, and I, didn't utilize HR. And I think there's also times where it's, I'm wondering, is it because I'm a woman 
or, you know, what's everybody else making that's sitting next to me? And I think at least, and this is where I will say as women, definitely, I mean, this is, there's so many studies that have been behind it. We do go into that. Well, we're just grateful to be here kind of thing. Or mm-hmm. we, we don't, women don't ask for as Especially much money. Especially when we're triggered from, from 2008, us millennials, right. like that's triggering when you were really, there were no jobs. Right. Yeah. And so that's the thing too. If you are already talking, you kind of start to talk yourself out of at times pushing further when you hear, cause you're just like, well, I didn't get the promotion. They don't think I'm good enough. You know, people talk about imposter syndrome, which I really try not to use that word anymore. Cause I do think it honestly becomes something that really gets into our psyche a bit more. It's too much of a trendy word. Um, and imposter I'm gonna, I'm gonna, syndrome is, yeah. and I'm going to take this one from Mel Robbins imposter syndrome to me is just, okay, you're not as confident with it. Of course, I'm going to have imposter syndrome if I'm new at a company exactly. or new in a role. Imposter syndrome, just real quick, Pin, isn't real. And we can have another episode about that. But imposter syndrome isn't real. And there's actually, oh my God, I wish I could remember the person. Oh, I know she's, um, it, it's maybe Girls Who Code or um, Women in Tech. You can Google it and find, but she did a, um, the person who runs that, uh, did an awesome um, speech at a college and there's like actually research that that's not a real thing. It's made up. Right. But, and so what I was, Stacy speaking, I didn't Sorry. Say Stacey. no, 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 it's fine. I was just thinking the Mel Robbins thing, which really has yeah. stuck with me more to think of it like this rather than imposter syndrome. Am I good enough? I don't know this is I am building confidence and confidence happens with action and confidence is building competency. Yep. So it's just like if tomorrow I took snowboarding lessons for the first time, I'm not going to be confident. But me putting on the boots, getting on the slope, falling down the first time, I'm building confidence. Yep. So if you think about it in that way, and I say this confidence piece too, because I realized Morgan, like she said earlier, is direct. We, again, having sisters and just being black women, women of color in general studies show you're more when when rated like in a survey of how confident you are, women of color tend to rate that they have more, say they have, they are more confident than white women or white women rate themselves as having lower confidence typically. And that's just because as a person of color, you have to go through life having thicker skin, being confident. And I believe the stat actually is, or however the data, but it's that the most confident people are black women on average because of the fact that like our first episode, you have to be incredibly confident walking into you the room as to a black woman just to survive. And you already know there's less of you at the table, especially in corporate America. I mean, again, a whole other topic, but confidence, it's hard to have these conversations. So do practice, mm-hmm. do practice with a friend, do mm-hmm. practice with a mentor, do practice with a former colleague, do practice with your spouse, whoever, mm-hmm. to role play, to practice, because I have had to say, I've, I haven't said it to HR, but I have said it to former managers, which is, I say it now because I do try to show up as my authentic self and I try to show vulnerability because to me, vulnerability is the true sign of strength. And I say, I'm bringing this to your attention. You know, I didn't get this promotion. If, if you're saying it's because of a reason that was outside of my control, outside of the work I've done, you know, it's, we could only promote one person. Why not me as a black woman, as a woman, I have been skipped over before. I have made less than, and the studies don't lie. So I have to question this because if I don't bring it up, what I don't want to do is what I've worked so hard on is building my confidence that I won't be quiet about these conversations or passive. And I won't just go, that's okay. I'm happy to have a job. Yep. Cause that takes work and it's hard to be your own advocate. So I realize, like just, you know, if you're someone listening to this things going, oh my gosh, that sounds like me. I'm up for a promotion. I didn't get it. I can't go to practice. You can do it and stop saying imposter syndrome. You're building confidence. Yep. And I, you bring up a great point with the practice because, you know, the free options are family and friends. And sometimes you, if you have the privilege or if there's the benefit at your company, because there's a lot of companies that mm. are starting to offer that benefit of a career coach. Yeah. Um, I even had to, you know, as a recruiter, like I said, we all go through this. Yes. And everybody has their own, you know, imposter syndrome. And, you know, man, I took a hit 
um, at some point in my career, I'm not going to point it out specifically because I don't want to go there, but um, took a, 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 an ego hit at some point and it, and it, it was because of what this organization did to me and how crappy they made me feel that I was like, I need a career coach after Stacy had had worked with better, yeah. up, better up. What is it called? Yeah. Better, better up. up. Um, it was a, a company I worked for. They had given this benefit and, and better up is literally, I encourage everybody to go look at it. Cause I do think if you haven't had a career coaching experience, a former boss once said to me after you're at a certain level, um, once you get to like a director and again, every company has different naming conventions and what, you know, what your corporate ladder is. He's like, people aren't going to try to level you up. No one's mm -hmm. going to be coaching you. No one's going to be, this is how to be a VP. This is how to be a director. So you do have to look outside sometimes to do that. And so this better up is this company that it was like, I, I kind of talked about it. Like it was Tinder for career coaching, mm where, you know, you fill out a little profile, they ask you some questions, and then they are giving you a group of potential matches of career coaches from various different backgrounds or, you know, and then you can have like a one-on-one -on -one meet up with them. And if you do use this app, I do encourage you, if it just like finding a therapist, if it doesn't feel like you're meshing, do, you know, do fire them, you know, swipe left. Left was bad, right? Yes. You know, go look for the next person, find a match. Because I had an amazing experience with my career coach yeah. that she worked with Better Up and had her own practice. That's how I found her. Again, I just really like a lot saw of a difference in you too. I really it did. It was crazy. Like, and this was also during 2020 when I was working at a startup that was dwindling because we were in business travel and nobody was traveling. And I was also in a new management. There was a lot of new happening and there was a lot of anxiety in the world itself. And when I tell you, and then George Floyd's murder mm. that this woman, and she wasn't even located in the U S which most of them are, but didn't matter. She was in the UK. Like I would cry to her mm -hmm. on the phone. She built me up. She, she validated my experiences to encourage me to like, you know, you're not to help with. It's like when you have bad relationships in the past, she helped to kind of make sure I wasn't using the bad of the past and applying it to the now. Yep. And I will say, um, and I didn't use better up, but it was better up that inspired me. And I actually ended up going through and I'll link cause I'm totally forgetting, um, the name of the, the small business that I used. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I went through and, and used this other career coach and she was phenomenal. And really at the time in my life when I needed it, um, really built me back up mm. and, um, they're not therapists. I will say that, yeah. you know, and she was explicit about that. I'm not a therapist. I'm here. You, and I was seeing a therapist simultaneously. And she right. was like, I advise that, Same. right. You know, I, the That's therapist call will out. process. Yeah. The therapist will process the past and get you, you know, to work through any, you know, issues, trauma, whatever. But I am here to, build up that confidence and process like what has been going on at work in your career. It's a career coach for a reason to then propel you to the future, to what you want. Right. And I will say a career coach can be, you know, someone that's going to help you with your corporate job. Or if you're like, I want to start doing a side hustle or for us, like we want to do a podcast, you know, they can help with all sorts of things. Yeah. So that is absolutely another yeah. avenue. And there's all different kinds of prices for that. Like I said, I really all different yeah. kinds of prices. And it was also, we worked on my specific goals. It wasn't like the career coach was, you know, it wasn't, Hey, I have this presentation coming up or, you know, I'm trying to win this sale, help me to do this. It, Sure, I talked to her about some of that because some of it was also challenges that I, maybe I was facing or, you know, I am not, uh, again, my degree is in communications. I didn't go to school for data science for a reason. And, you know, sometimes it was when I had a component of things to help me lean into my strength to overcome what I felt was a weakness. Yeah. And so, I again, I think I don't want to go too much in the career coaching because I think there's a good another episode there we should talk about their career coaching also with like a strengths finder and mm, yeah you know, really that knowing too. your personality mm -hmm. at work and mm -hmm. making you lean into those strengths but anyway so 
definitely though a career coach for every everybody will benefit yeah i think the only other thing that i am at least that i'm immediately thinking of and i i'm sure this conversation is like drawing up so many questions and people wanting advice so like again even when stacy was like i really think you know we need to talk about career stuff and like you have all this information i was like girl, you're going to need to like lead me here because for me, this is just like my daily. And so I don't Mm. even think of it as like, what's the most important thing that people need to hear about? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like my constant, but the only other thing I was going to say was, um, you know, I know HR can be scary because we, you know, oftentimes we think of HR, like I got sexually harassed or something bad happened or I'm going to get laid off. Um, but remember that HR is also there to help you. And even if they're not good at their job, that's not your problem. Yes. They're legally there and in place. And there's, whether there's not an internal legal counsel, there's, there is counsel associated with your company. So just understand that like you do have protection, right? Right. Like I'm not saying to, you know, go into your boss's office and throw a hot coffee and act like a, you know, a wild, you know, a a wild (laughs) animal or something. But I'm saying like within your rights, you are allowed to ask these questions. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll Chris Jenner, you too, you know, where if you're getting a no, maybe you're just talking to the wrong person and I understand at corporate America that's not necessarily the same and like her Chris Jenner's Jenner's reference of like how to make more you know how to get a sale and how to you know get right going what you want to get done but think of it that way too sometimes it's doesn't it doesn't hurt to ask just because you get a no doesn't mean you're gonna get fired just because you say like I you know hey I gotta go to HR for this doesn't all that they're gonna say is I, I'm not allowed to give you that information. Right. What's the worst that's going to happen? It's on file. It's on file now. And we could, we need to go through other things too, of like getting on file well, with HR. I was just about to ask you that with HR, I think another, again, cause I know now, especially since Morgan is an internal recruiter and it's different than if you're working with an agency, they wouldn't really know the internal company's yeah, HR. Yeah. But now that you work more closely with HR, I think something else for me that has happened in the past and even kind of things currently, I I definitely think about it again, as I prepare with my fertility journey of like, you know, my job is pretty high, high lot going on. It's high stress. (laughs) It's fast pace. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, how do people with children do this? And Mm. how do Morgan encouraged me? So I will ask this question and then you can tell what you've done with me. Um, I think specifically, Again, you mentioned earlier burnout. Everybody, that's another buzzword too, but with my underlying conditions of having polycystic ovarian syndrome, which can cause brain fog and self-doubt, mm. and you just- it's, And there's, there's so, so many, many people symptoms. out there like that, like yeah. the same. With that, and also I do have ADHD, and yep. we'll talk about so that in have another that. <laughs> episode where it's very different in women specifically, but at least for me, because ADHD- didn't get diagnosed to me officially again until I was an adult. Um, I also can get burnout from my symptoms of ADHD. And I was having an anxiety attack, like, I don't know, a year, Mm -hmm. 18 months ago at my job. And Morgan was kind of like, I was like, I just don't know what to do. Da 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 da. And kind of the same vein as this, which was like, use your resources. So maybe yep. just like give a, yep. what would you tell me again? Yeah. Um, yeah. Stacy was just having a hard time. I mean, you know, and, and to make folks understand why she was having a hard time and incredibly when you are in a, any job, but especially, you know, for hers, it's a client facing, you've got to deliver, you know, there's just so many things building and the list because her job is project management and constant delivery. It's, Uh, unless you're an internal recruiter and there's, you know, there's no hiring happening. Like I can't imagine that for your job, the same, you know, unless all of a sudden you lose all your clients, the list is never done job, (laughs) right? You then don't have a job. Like the list is never done. You know, same thing for me. If we're not hiring them, you know, totally. So you're, there's always going to be that, that certain level of stress. So I said, if it's to this level, and you're now saying that your health is impacted and you already know you have all of these doctor, therapist, um, 
you know, labeled, you know, uh, autoimmune diseases, however, you know, conditions, um, get it on file, get it on paper because that then one, it's additional job security for the day where you're, you have a complete like brain fog moment, ADHD kicks in and whatever. And an issue happens and you're like, I literally, I'm, I need to actually like walk out of my house right now, or I'm going to have like a, a full on meltdown, whatever the case may be. Um, it's then on file and that's, that's part of your job protection. Right. Um, but then also for when it does get to the point of, you're also saying, you know, and I'm not even, you know, in that moment, get out all the information you can. It doesn't hurt to also say I'm super stressed and they're, you know, they've denied me for promotion multiple times and but, 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 but it will only help you to have those things on paper because of, we are in this world of corporate America where layoffs happen and you can get accommodations. Like these are things you can get accommodations for whether for your health issues. You and need- I had no idea about this. Again, a lot of my career had been in startups where we don't really have an HR or it's like one or two things, but it, the accommodations, the resources. The resources, you then have someone, so you may have someone that literally internally is probably like called like an accommodation specialist or something, or they may have, you know, an HR person that, that is all encompassing of all of those things, but they're, that they're required by law. These are things under like FMLA. So even if they don't have HR, then there's an outsourced third party. Like, again, these are things required by law in most states if it's four employees or more. So again, and you don't have to be the person that knows all the answers. All you have to do is go to HR and say, hey, I have some questions. Yep. And I did. And that was the thing. It was the first time, again, been working since, you know, at a, desk job since 2010. It's the first time in my career I actually had done that, gone to HR. And then what happened out of it? I was given resources. I now have an ADHD mentor at work. I was added into the neurodivergent um, employee resource group at work. I didn't know. And that's another, I didn't know that specific group existed. So I was connected with other people and women that have ADHD and in were able to then help mentor me on things and say even some women that were in the same role as me but I also was then given access to which this is reminding me I need to follow up with it actually because like a true ADHD or the things that aren't usually to help you fall off the plate same um but I was also given some resources for um an ADHD coaching program that I'm gonna do yeah um that also then they'll be helping coaching manage they also will give kind of recommendations to managers that have to manage people with neurodivergent disabilities yep and so we also know too that stress so like you know for my disability psoriatic arthritis um you know stress is a huge trigger lack of sleep is a huge trigger not working out is a huge trigger eating the wrong food is a huge trigger all of those things like you're a person with a disability legally you are protected. And if you are announcing those things at work, you can get an accommodation. Okay. And I'll say it again. If you're announcing those things at work, you can get an accommodation and then think of it too. You can talk to your boss even more comfortably, mm-hmm. you know, when you know, like this is out in the open. Cause I know it, not everybody is, not everybody is, help. is me and Stacy. Yeah. Right. And I completely understand that. Yeah. Um, but once you then, you know, take it to at least that step of HR, especially if your boss is someone you're not comfortable with, then you, and you can even ask HR, you know, how, how can I talk about this with my boss? Is it okay to say, you know, they can guide you. They're legally going to be required to give you the information. Right. And it'll help you like Morgan was saying, they'll give you the guidance, but it also then helps you to, again, we'll go to this in, in another episode a little bit more in depth, but it encourages you then to open those gates, right? And to be vulnerable and show up as your true self. And and it, it gives more context to others too. It, it's able, me going to HR and saying, I have ADHD and then being in the ADHD ERG group with other people. Of course, I have support and encouragement there and hearing their stories, but it it's enabled me then to more easily say to people, especially newer people that I'm working with, you know, just a heads up, I have ADHD. So these are the things that I need. Yep. 
you know, or this is why I may yep. ask you for X, Y, or Z, or yep. this is how I operate in this way because my brain functions a little differently. This yep. is how I process it. Might not, might, might not make sense to you. And it, I can tell you, I can also say this, how many people have come back and said, thank you for sharing that. I have ADHD too, or yep. I am also on the ASD spectrum. Vulnerability is powerful. Vulnerability is welcoming. Yes. And I, same thing. I have had people, you know, I'm very open about, you know, how I have, you know, multiple autoimmune disorders and that I need 10 to 12 hours of sleep at night. And like my life is not what it used to be, pre right. all of this. And it allows other people to, whether it's that they have an autoimmune disease or whether they've got four kids at home, it allows for someone to feel like, okay, I can be vulnerable too, because exactly. this is real life. It's the vulnerability. And it's also like Morgan was saying, the protection, but it's, to, and I say again, especially because I can only speak to the experience as a woman, when life events do happen or say something before that life event does kick in and you're not at your best and you're not performing and then they can say, well, you didn't do this, Stacey. You didn't do this. Yeah. You didn't hit your mark. This was whatever. So they know it. So do it before it gets to the point where it could potentially be used against you because they don't know. And here's one last thing that I'll say too. Um, and I think maybe this is a good spot to wrap it up. This is like my final, oh, unless you have I another had question. I have one okay. final thought. Yeah. Let me say this and then you have your final. Um, I learned this from a manager that I really respected when I was training. And I, well, I'm laughing right now because I went out of my way to say, can you please train me to be a good manager? Because there's no training here, which happens often. Reminder oh, yeah. that there's not training. No. Just because someone's a manager doesn't mean they were trained like, to be a manager. Never had training. And, um, and so one of the things that they said to me was, I, I always remember when I'm going into whether it's a random conversation or a weekly meeting or their, you know, yearly review, I hired this person mm. or this person was hired by this company and they are, they were good enough to be hired. They're good enough to be here. Even if they've been not performing lately, unless I'm about to fire them, unless it's at that point where they're, you know, the performance is that bad. Everyone has something in them that I can point to that they've done great. Yep. I should be able to say in that conversation, even if I'm about to give them a critique, but hey man, I'm seeing what you're doing X, Y, Z here. There should always be at least one thing because you've been hired, you're being paid and you're an employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. This isn't involved. This isn't volunteerism. So you're deserving of that. And think right. of that too, when you're in a conversation with your manager and maybe it is time to move on. If you're never getting positive feedback, right? That right there is a huge red flag. Right. Right. I completely, completely agree. My only final thought was um, just I, I realized some of this advice were millennials talking to people that have been in the career, millennial Gen Z. So I do, or, sorry, millennial Gen X, boomers beyond. I do want to say for those entering the workforce that might be reading this or listening to this, or if you are listening to this and thinking, oh, my niece, nephew, cousin, sister, friend is entering the workforce, not even a generational thing, because you could do a career switch completely and it's like you're now a new hire. Some of these things, you do have to suck it up. <laughs> not some of these things, the suck it up with the salary and things like that. You can't go in there flexing too hard when you're trying to get your foot in the door, right? Well, like you can, but I just mean... It depends a young Stacy making thirty thousand dollars at her first job. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. You have to start. Somewhere. So we're talking yeah. more about, and again, I think we yeah. emphasize that with especially the friend who didn't get the promotion. This is someone that has extensive experience. Yep. If we're talking, you're you're net new coming into the yeah, field. You have no experience, and you're just trying to get. You're just trying to get in the door, and it's this is the company that you want to work for. Um, yeah, sometimes you just. You got to eat shit to eat. Literally sometimes. took the words out of my mouth, you know? So, so with that. With that, um, I, think, uh, I think that's another good uh, little, little do it for the story app. So we hope you learned something or it's something that you could, again, share with your friends, family, you know, anyone that you know that you think, hey, this sounds like you. But uh, but yeah, if you yeah. got something out of this podcast, even, you know, one second of information or you just appreciated, um, you know, what we're what we're talking about. 
please go review us. It takes two yes. seconds. Um, yes. Five stars. Apple, um, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube. Share as well. us, you know, um, because Share, I will say, like, love. People, yeah. We, we we want this thing to be big. We love doing this. Yeah, and, we want to um, have... It, it, the motivation is fun. And if you're, mm-hmm. you know, it, like, if you didn't hear in this episode... <laughs> This is not our full time job. We have full time jobs. No, nobody's paying us. We to do work this. our asses off. Um, yeah. So you know, weekends doing something like this, it's fun. But we want to help others, so we would love it if you would help us too. Yeah. So awesome. Well, we hope you appreciate our story, but have a good one. Davis, Davis, Davis. Davis. we out.